What we're graphing right now is this guy. Y equals 2 sine x plus root 3. In this case, what I'm going to be doing is thinking about each of the pieces one at a time, just like before, but noticing, again, they interact with each other. So here's regular sine x. Here's regular sine x. The first thing that I think is easiest to recognize is 2 sine x. What's the difference between sine x and 2 sine x? Yeah, it's the amplitude. It's stretched out like this. Okay? So in fact, I literally, and since we're doing a bit of working here, you might as well do this with me. I literally take this original guy, right? Uh, if that's 1, then 2 is directly above him, double the height. And this guy, which is negative 1, will be down. He gets stretched in the opposite direction. So let's call that negative 2. Right? Once you've got that in place, zeros, when you double zeros, what do you get? Zero. zero. So they're going to stay put. One, two, three, and now you've got the shape. Right? So I'm just going to connect the dots. That's good enough for me. Okay? So this is two sine x. Now I need to do this plus root three. What does it mean? It means there's a vertical shift, which is why you can see conveniently on my second set of axes. I'm expecting this whole thing, which used to be symmetrical around the x-axis, or even if not symmetrical, the same amount above and below. And I'm moving the whole thing up, right? So I'm not going to get as much below as I did before. Okay? Now, our range used to be negative 2 to 2. But we've seen this before, when you add root 3 to everything, the range also moves by that root 3 amount. Okay. Now, you're never really going to get assessed officially on knowing any of the decimal places of root 3. But I think it's helpful to know that it's roughly 1.7. Because what that means is now I've got a rough idea of how far this is going to go. This that used to be 2 is going to be about 3.7. And this, which used to be negative 2, is going to be about negative 0 0.3, which is why I've got a teeny little bit of it down here. Okay? So I'm going to draw it in. I only use the approximation, the decimal, to work out scale. But I'm actually going to minus 2 plus root 3. I'm going to write it exactly on there. Is that OK? So you see I'm mucking with the range right now. Uh, let's call that, what's the midway line going to be? <coughs> The, like what used to be here. It used to be zero, well now it's been moved up root three. So I'll just pop that in. And then my upper boundary will be two plus root three. Okay? Now I find it helpful if I were doing this on paper, what I would do is I would put a very light pencil line right down the middle. I can't do that with a whiteboard marker, so I'm gonna put a dotted line. There's my dotted line. I put it in just so I can hijack my ability to do these lines quite well so long as I know where the middle is. Okay? So I'm going to call that halfway and I've got to pass through right through the middle and then I'm going to get my high point and my low point. Okay? Does that look good so far? Okay. Now I'm going to join the dots. Let's see how I go. Okay. So here is, um, you know, within some amount of reason, here's my graph of y equals 2 sine x plus root 3 beside my graph of y equals 2 sine x. The picture is done. However, you will notice, now that I've drawn it, I realize I have to supply additional information, namely these guys, okay? You got intercepts? You better tell me what they are. Now, how do you work out intercepts of anything? Like, if I gave you this, how would you work out the x-intercepts of that thing? I know you know what they are, but how do you work them out? You let y equal zero. You let y equal zero, because that is the equation of the x-axis. This is y equals zero. So being that this is my equation, to find these guys, and in fact, I'm even going to write that uh, over here, to find x-intercepts, and I'd love you to write this as well, right? I'm going to solve 2 sine x plus root 3 equals 0. Okay? So this question is about graphing. But all of a sudden we have found to graph this successfully and accurately, wait a second, I'm going to need to pull on all that stuff I know about just solving treat equations, graphs aside. 
okay? Which is why, as I've been trying to convince you, if you learn to solve two equations through graphing, then it sort of pays you back, because then when you come to graphing, you use that knowledge to do your tree equations. So, I'm going to rearrange a little bit and then I want you to help me out. I'm going to subtract root 3 from both sides and then I'm going to divide by 2. So now this is what I want to solve. Okay. Now, depending on whichever way you feel comfortable, maybe if you're like, no, I like quadrants, they're, they're happy for me. Which quadrants am I in? You're in third and fourth. Now here's the wonderful thing about if you are good enough at graphing to not rely on the quadrants. Could you not already have told me that it was the third and fourth quadrants just by looking at this? Do you see that? Look, where am I graphing between? What's the domain I'm graphing between? Nought to 360. This middle point, that's 180. Is this not the third and fourth quadrants? from 180 to 360. So, I mean, you can use this, it's fine. Tick, tick. But you actually already knew that information, okay? So now I need to say, uh, what is the exact value that goes with root three on two? It's sine, so it'll be 60 degrees, won't it? Okay. In the third and fourth quadrants, what does 60 degrees look like? You've got 180 plus, and you've got 360 minus, like so. By the way, I really like this line. It just helps me get the answer right. When I get to this point here, if I've made a mistake, it's much easier to find my mistake when I come back an hour later into the exam if I see this line here and I've screwed this up. Now, come back. What do you think? 240, 300. How good does your graph look in terms of scale? <laughs> now, if you are looking at this line here, right, and you say, and this is why inverse trigonometric functions are their whole own topic in extension one HSC. Okay, if you just look at this, right, and you say, oh, cool, I know what to do to get rid of this sign. I'll go shift sign and your calculator will tell you this. Well, rather, you'll put this into your calculator and your calculator will tell you this. This is no use to me, right? Well, not quite, not on its own. I can see what the relationship is, by the way, uh, minus 60. If I think about the unit circle, where do all of my measurements on the unit circle start? Where do they begin? They start on the positive side of the x-axis, right? And if you're going minus, you're not going anti-clockwise like you usually do. You're going clockwise that much. Well, if you go clockwise that much into the fourth quadrant, surprise, surprise, you get 300 degrees. Right? Does that make sense? So that's the meaning of the answer. As to the reason why it gives you that rather than that, that'll have to wait to the HSC course. Okay. So let me stop there. <coughs> Uh, I think there are big, two big takeaways from these two questions. Okay? Number one, when you have two kinds of modification, they interact. Okay? So just be watchful. Minus 90 doesn't necessarily mean take it and go 90 degrees. Right? Have a look at the coefficient, see what's going on. Secondly, when you do some kind of modification, depending on the picture you get, sometimes you'll have to provide extra information that you usually don't. The regular sign graph doesn't require any effort like that. Why not? Why doesn't this guy require that? Because because you don't need to do any extra work to know that that's 180 and 360. To some extent, you've memorized that. Like that's just part of your brain now, so you don't have to work to get there. Whereas for this question, it's a substantial amount of work to do that. Okay.